in this section so what is plasma plasma is neutralized ion sorry plasma is a neutral ionized gas carrying a large number of free electrons and positively charged ions so the plasma is nothing is just a neutral ionized gas carrying large number of free electrons and ion and charged ion positively charged ions so the basically the source of energy for generating plasma is what radio frequency source from there we are generating the plasma so in this process involves the chemically reactive gas such as ccl2 f2 to the plasma one of that contains this gas contains the ions and it and has its own carrier gas mm, figure uh, there is a figure so you can see that in the plasma with ions and reactive neutrals so we are discussing about the plasma etching and its working principle so plasma etching operates on both high kinetic energy and chemical reaction between the neutrals and the substrate material so so there is a neutrals and there is a charged ion in the plasma plasma basically consist of free electrons and charged ions so the reactive neutrals the reactive neutrals bombarded the target on the both that is the side wall as well as the normal surface you can see in the you can see able to see the figure that is there is a charged ions or the neutrals they are bombarding the side walls as well as the normal to the surface the, the, the normal surfaces whereas the charged ion bombarded only the normal substrate of the substrates the etching of the substrate material is kaise ho raha hai pitching the high energy ions in the plasma bombarding the substrate surface with simultaneously that is chemical reaction between reactive neutrals and the substrate material there is a chemical reaction also like it's when it's bombarded the surface substrate surface it there is a chemical reaction between the reactive neutral so the name is reactive neutralized because it will react with the substrate material and the high energy high energy reaction causes local evaporation at the, at the surface of the substrate so this results in the removal of substrate material so what we are seeing that in the conventional dry etching that is we are getting very slow rate that is 0.1 micrometer to the per minute but in this uh, plasma etching we may increase this rate to up to this 2 micrometer per minute and that can be stretched up to 5 micrometer per minute it is much faster and cleaner than wet etching so this is the advantage is a faster and cleaner so dry etching of silicon substrate that is by plasma typically faster and cleaner as as compared to the wet etching and there is a things like aspect ratio term is aspect ratio it is defined as the ratio of dimension in depth to the dose of the in the on the surface means the thickness by you can say that the length that is the there is a ratio of thickness to the length that is aspect ratio so in this case in the dry etching we can get aspect ratio of uh, like uh, is the less than 15 but another problem is that the relates with the contamination of the substrate surface by the residues so the another thing is that another technique for the dry etching is deep reactive ion etching this is a plasma etching can produce deep trench than the wet etching but 
with the trapped angles so there is a trap angle theta we here you can say that this is the angle so the trapped trench are not desirable in many applications such as resonator that involves pair of centipedes or we can say that com types electrodes where we need parallel in the case of electrodes where need we need a parallel combination not a, this is like a, this types of uh, trapped angles so we need to precisely we need to make the theta that is the trapped angle is equal to 0 so dir process may produce deep trench almost theta equal to 0 so we have to maintain the theta and we have to keep this cavity angle very low and in the di dri we will get and we will try to make virtually that is it is not possible to make theta equal to 100% equal to 0 but here we will almost equal to zero that is we can say that we are making virtually vertical walls with a high aspect ratio and the aspect aspect ratio is what it is the thickness to the length we can say that the length or in the general term we say that it is the aspect ratio is nothing it's a ratio of dimension in the depth to the to those in the surface so only the dimension on the surface is the length or breadth so mostly we are discussing about the length so this is the ratio of aspect ratio is the ratio of depth to the length so dir process dri process differ from the dry plasma in, is that is it's able to produce thin protective films of a few micro layer of a few micrometer on the side walls in this picture you are able to say that in dri process it is they are producing a thin protective layer on the side walls so the basic working principle we will discuss like dri process provides a thin film of few micro protective coating on the side walls during the etching process it involves use of high density plasma source which allows alternating process of plasma etching of this substrate material means what it in this process in this process involves high density plasma source plasma source kyun lete hain this allows because this allows alternating processes of plasma etching of the substrate material and the deposition of etching protective material on the side walls so in this process what we are using high density plasma source and this will allow us what this will allow us alternating process like the etching of the substrate material and the deposition of etching protective material on the side walls as you are able to see in the figure so there is a protective film on the side walls we are forming or we are depositing there the protective layer you can see in the black color so the most polymer are used for this purpose so the most common purpose uh, uh, most materials such as photoresist are produced on the polymerization during the plasma etching process and the dri process with polymeric side wall polymeric side wall protection have been used to produce of aspect ratio around 30 or we can say that it's a vertical wall with a theta plus minus 2 degree for this we are able to produce but with the recent development yes then even the recent development we are able to produce high aspect ratio of around 100 for what up to 300 micrometer so the this is the about the deep reactive ion reaching so recent development as we are able to produce 100 or 300 sorry 100 aspect ratio so the most common protective material side wall protection materials are like polymer photoresist silicon dioxide and the selective ratio accordingly we'll say that high selective ratio or high aspect ratio we are getting with the silicon dioxide this is the protective or protection material for the side walls so we have discussed or we will discuss about the different between the 
parameters based on like directionality and the production automation and the environmental impact how much the environmental impact has dry aging and the wet aging we can see that the put dry aging has a low environmental impact and high in the case of wet aging but the selective ratio so the dry aging is poor and wet aging is very good but for the material to be used is the only certain material in the dry aging but in wet aging we can take all material but cleanliness or on the cost in basis of the cost like equipment cost is very expensive in dry aging so as per the requirement what is our requirement or we need we have lots of money so we can go for the dry aging as this is expensive but we need the like high in we are concerned about the high environmental impact so we will go about the wet aging so as per the requirement we will decide what we have to choose either dry aging or the wet aging means like which at which rate we want to form faster or slower how much the dimensional coolant control you want in the product so if you want to good dimensional control then we'll we will we'll go with the dry aging so these are the parameters to select a particular type of aging for the bulk manufacturing process so the, the next term is surface micro machining as we have discussed like there are three methods like first one is bulk manufacturing and the second one is what surface micro machining so okay <laughs> the surface micro machining and the third one is the liga process so basically what we have seen in the bulk manufacturing that we are just removing the material from the substrate by physical or chemical means but in micro machining what we are doing we will do the adding of materials layer by layer on the top of a sub substrate so basically we have learned uh, this is somewhat process like low pressure chemical vapor deposition on that same technique we are just adding layer on a substrate or we can say that chemical vapor deposition also so in that case we are just increasing the thickness of the substrate by adding a layer but in bulk manufacturing what we are discussing where we have discussed like that we are removing material from the substrate this is the difference between the bulk manufacturing and the surface micro machining so in the low pressure chemical vapor deposition we have discussed like polycrystalline silicon is a common common material for the layer mod as a used for the layer materials or we can say that there is a sacrificial layer made up of sio2 on this is used in most common sacrificial layer that is made up of sio2 is most commonly used for the mims component so basically the over height overall height of a structure is limited that is the available thickness of the substrate or the wafer available commercially is limited so sometimes what we need more thickness of the substrate or the material so what we will do we'll just add a layer by adding layer we can increase the thickness by up to using the micro machining techniques by up to 2 to 5 micrometer thickness and in some special case we can also go for the 20 micrometer for the thickness so basically we are adding a material to the substrate to increase the flexibility or we can say that to increase the thickness of the material so there is the process involves so the deposition process are commonly used in this method is very expensive it requires multiple mask that is sometime it leads to expensive or time consuming and this requires a sacrificial layer to create cavities and this type this which lead also to wasteful with technical problems we'll discuss like what is the general process for surface micro machining kya ho sakta surface micro machining ke liye general process we'll discuss these things
So basically, there is a three component or divided in three parts. We can say that surface micro machining has a three components. First one is sacrificial component or sacri. Uh, we can say that a spacer layer. And the second is the microstructural component, and the third one is insulator component. So the sacrificial layer is really made up of PSG, that is the polyphosphosilicate glass, or we can say that it's SiO2 deposited over substrate by low pressure chemical vapor deposition technique. So PSG can be used more rapidly than the SiO2 in HF agent. What is the HF agent? We have discussed there are HF agent for the etching process. So, sacrificial component is usually made up of what? Polysilicate glass. And the form in the components in the form of films can be as long as 1 to 2000 micrometer and its thickness is around 0.125 to 5 micrometer. So in the figure, we are able to that the micro machining techniques first starts with the step one that is with the silicon substrate base silicon substrate based with PSG that is polysilicate glass deposited on its surface and the mask one that we can say that this is the one first mask the mask one is made up in the second step to cover the surface of the PSG layer for the subsequent etching to allow for the attachment of the further cantilever as shown in the figure 3. So mask 1 is placed over the PSG layer. So another step, the next step is what? There is a mask 2, second mask is made up of deposition of polysilicon microstructure material the another mask made up of polysilicon material polysilicon microstructure material in the step four and that is the step that is the fourth step that is the d so in this the what we are seeing that the psg that remains in the next step that and subsequently is away to produce the desired cantilever beam as shown in the step E. So after the desired say formation, the most suitable or the most suitable agent used in the last step for the sacrificial PSG layer is the one is to one HF or one is to one means what we have made which is made up of HF in, in one volume and we are diluting with the water we can say that after the etching the structure is rinsed with the deionized water thoroughly followed by the drying under the infrared lamps so there are some issues with the formation of micro machine we can say that there are some disadvantage or we can say that there are some drawbacks or there are some issues with the micro machining also so one of the issues we'll discuss like this mm -hmm. okay we'll see first like the what is the different thin oxide films and the what is the different effects of the sacrificial layer over the each rate if you are using the cvd sio2 then the etching rate is very slow lateral leaching rate was very slow if we go with the phosphor phosphosilicate that is the PSG the leaching rate is around 1 and when we with go with the boron phosphosilicate sacrificial layer then the leaching rate is maximum so there are three or three to four different issue problem with the micro machining Yeah. So I'm stopping here for the next class. I just want to make one more announcement like that. I want to make a group or you come with your own group for the activity purpose. 
so in which you are comfortable may i made your group or you will come with your own group for the activity so we will come with our own group sir okay the next class